What's going on everybody? Welcome to vlog 112, 112. It's crazy, I cannot believe that we're here. Thank you very much. And you'll notice that we're in kind of a different setup. I'm not on a mountain, I'm not in a crazy property, I'm not running through the city empty and being super motivational. No, we are in my office, we are at my desk. A lot of people have been asking about in the current marketplace, is now the time to invest in real estate if we have cash on the side? And my answer is emphatically yes. Now, before you click away, okay, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to sell you a real estate investment course. I don't have one of those. I just see a lot of comments over the last two years asking for actual information and an educational video to help you guys in real estate, right? I'm not an investment professional. I don't want you to go out and spend all your life savings and say, oh, Ryan Serhant told me in a vlog, he's that guy from TV and the thing and that and that and then come after me. No, this is purely educational, disclaimer, done. I wanna make it fun. Okay, so don't like be like, oh, Sirhan, you're gonna get all serious on me now. This isn't a business channel. No, no, no. This is still the Ryan Sirhan show. This is still amazing. This is still awesome. It's gonna be fun and we're gonna do things and we're not gonna be behind this desk for the entire vlog. So keep your pants on or off, whatever works for you. But before I get into what I wanna teach you about real estate investing is I want you to click that little thing. Okay. I never ask for it ever. I think in 111 vlogs, maybe twice because I'm so bad at this stuff. Give me a little like. YouTube loves that little blue th the guy with the thumbs up. It looks like this. I was a hand model. I know what hands look like. Now is an amazing time to invest in real estate. And I want to tell you why. When I got into real estate in 2008, the day Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy, I had zero dollars. That's why I got into real estate in the first place. Now, a couple years after I got into the business and I had started saving a little bit of money, I realized I am in an opportune position to see amazing real estate deals. I see what's really, really expensive and what's not selling. I see what sells really, really well in terms of presentation, price, patience on the market. But I also see deals that are in distress. I see deals where sellers just really, really, really need to sell. If you are looking to invest in real estate over the next 10 years, from now, probably through the summer, is the best time to invest in real estate. There is fear in the marketplace, rightly so. The stock market is incredibly volatile, right? People are nervous. 30 million people as of this filming right now have filed for unemployment. We are in an election year. There's a pandemic. There's now murder hornets flooding the United States from the West Coast. There's a lot going on and people are afraid. And what do you do when people are afraid? The most successful investors make their money when they buy. You don't make your money when you sell because if you're smart when you invest, you make a smart purchase. That way you either never have to sell because you've calculated all of the scenarios within that ownership scenario, or when you do sell, whether it's a good market or a bad market, you're going to be in the positive. Let's take New York City, for example, the top so to speak, of the market in New York City hit in 2015. The fear in that marketplace was with the buyers because the buyers were afraid that they weren't gonna get the opportunity to purchase. And what do buyers do when they're afraid? They do one of two things. One, they don't buy at all because they're too nervous and they don't do anything. That's either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on timing, or they pay too much money. And listen, everything is in the timing. We don't know where the market is gonna go. The markets in general always go up over time, but they do go like this. Since then, the market has slowly come down. Depending on the neighborhood in New York, it's come down roughly seven to 10% every single year. There are properties now that are selling today for 50% less than what they were selling for in 2015, just five years ago. I'm personally selling a property right now for $4.4 million in Tribeca that in 2015 was first on the market for $8.8 .8 million. And that seller got offers for 8.2 and 8.3 and turned them down. That time, a couple hundred thousand dollars off the asking when everything else is selling at ask or above, it wasn't worth it. Buyers right now, for the first time in a very long time, don't need to move because most of them can't move. Most buyers are under shelter in place orders. Most buyers are quarantined. Most buyers are nervous that even if they do move, are they gonna like it? Is it enough space? What am I going to do? So the fear in the marketplace right now is with sellers. 
So I'm not saying it's a marketplace where you should go out there and take advantage of everybody, but it is a marketplace where, as a buyer, during this pandemic, when there is fear in the marketplace and interest rates are the lowest they have ever been, ever, this is a multi-trillion dollar PR campaign for homes. Everyone is stuck at home and they're being told that the home is the safest place to be. Your ability to buy a great home or multifamily, both fully finished or one that needs renovation right now is an amazing opportunity for you. Now let's say you find something that's a really, really good deal, but it needs to be renovated. Here's the quick math and the quick few things that I need you to think about before buying a property that needs to be renovated coming from somebody who spent millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars buying property that needs to be renovated and have learned the hard way, okay? What you need to focus on is the after repair value. Now there's a lot of things you need to pay attention to when you're buying a fixer upper, right? Does it need just structural work? Is the and structure relatively work? in good shape? What about the work? landscaping? What are about the utilities? The wiring so through? Many different things what kind of permitting are you going through right now? You're looking at this listing and it's $100,000 and it's an amazing, amazing deal or so you think at that price, okay? Because it sounds cheap, 100 grand, a house, all I have to do is fix it up a little bit. You're gonna look at comps comparable sales to determine what your after repair value is. To figure out what your after repair value is, you need to focus on five factors, okay? Your five factors are the condition, the age, the build, the size, and the style. So you need to find other properties that have sold, ideally within the last six months, because comps move really, really quickly that fit those five factors that are similar houses of a similar size built roughly around a similar time with a similar style that have sold for kind of a similar price, okay? So let's say all those comps, you pull them together and you determine that that after repair value is $150,000, all right? So you say, okay, 100 grand, buy it, I can fix it up, you know, a little bit of money, and then it'll be worth $150,000. No, do not do that because that's not how you figure out how to buy right. What do we talk about? You wanna buy right to make money on the sell so that you don't have to sell. That's the best part about owning real estate. Ideally, you build a portfolio of five, 10, 15, 20, $30 million worth of real estate that you don't have to sell, that is cash flow positive, that takes care of you for the rest of your life. That's what you want, okay? Multiply that after repair value, so $150,000 times 70%. So times 0.7, okay? And then you figure out what your construction costs are gonna be. So let's say you figure out your construction costs are gonna be 20,000 bucks, but you're gonna add to it like, I don't know, five grand just to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room, okay, because it's important. So 150,000 times 70%, which is 0.7, equals $105,000. You're then going to subtract the renovation costs. So 105 less $25,000, is $80,000. The most you are now allowed to pay, because I told you so, for this property that's asking $100,000 is 80 grand. If you buy this property for $80,000 or less, and ideally less, you wanna get it for as low as possible, you can feel very comfortable that you will reach a solid profit at that after repair value. Don't comp it to be something that's worth a lot, lot more, right? And if your construction costs happen to be a little bit more, plan for it. You know, if that $25,000 is just the structure itself or redoing the kitchen and floors, maybe you wanna do a little extra landscaping, add a couple grand to that budget, just so you can be prepared for it. Because what you really wanna do and what I like to do is I like my after repair value to be 2X. So I like it to be double the price of what I'm paying for it. So if I'm buying a property that's $5 million, I wanna know that after I finish my renovation, it can be worth 10 million bucks, okay? So that's how you go into a property that needs work to fix it and flip it and actually be safe and make a profit, all right? The other types of properties you can buy are ones that are fully finished. And actually, I have an idea now. Let's get out of the office. I wanna take you to the first building I ever did as a broker, first real building that a real big developer gave me that was 33 units, a huge sellout in an amazing location where I got awesome, awesome prices, where there's a pretty good, fully finished investment opportunity right now, right? Let's go. So this is it, 100 Avenue A, developed by Magnum Real Estate, 
33 units, architect was Isaacs and Stern. I got this building in 2014 as an exclusive. This building really put me on the map as a real estate broker in New York City who can handle sales of entire buildings. To this day, this building still has the highest price per square foot paid in the East Village for nearly $3,000 per square foot. Now, let's talk about investing in this building. There's a two bedroom that was just on the market in this building for sale, okay? A two bedroom, just over a thousand square feet. I think if I remember correctly, it was 1,013 square feet. It was on the market for sale for $1,450,000. Now, a two bedroom in this building rents right now for about $7,000 a month, okay? And if that's gonna be two roommates, they're each gonna pay $3,500 a month, so on and so forth. So let's say you buy that for one, four, five. And let's say you're gonna pay the monthlies, the monthlies there, the common charges and the real estate taxes combined are about $3,000 a month. So cash on cash, you're putting $3,000 a month out, okay? and you're getting $7,000 a month in every single month, that's about a 3% return. It's actually a little bit over 3%. And for New York City, with a new construction condo, that's actually a pretty good, respectable deal. No one comes and buys residential property, especially condos in New York City, to expect seven, eight, nine, 10% returns. You don't do that. The reason you buy residential property in New York City is for the greater appreciation like we talked about before. This deal works if it's cash, or if it has some financing, but it doesn't work if you can only put down 20 to 30% and you're gonna need financing. And side note, it's all in the timing. That same two bedroom that's in the market right now in this building for $1.45 million, I actually sold in 2016 for just about $2 million. So the market moves and it's really, really, really hard to time. Just because that's a $550,000 delta on the negative for the same apartment doesn't mean that the apartment is worth any less. It's only worth less if you wanna sell it in today's market, which is why right now is an amazing time to invest in real estate. Like I said, because prices have come down substantially from their highs of 2015. We are in an amazing, amazing, amazing time. And really my sales game theory is to have as many balls in the air as possible. Sell like Sir Ant, okay? was initially titled when I sold it to the publisher as Balls Up. That's how I sold it. Huge advance. Balls up. No shit. And then the publisher came to me and said, listen, we should maybe work on a title. But the reason I called it Balls Up is because I want to have as many balls in the air as possible because I believe in diversification. I want to know as much as I possibly can about as many different things so that when I meet anyone on the street, I can have a real conversation with them about whatever, right? But I also want my business to be diversified. I want to make money from selling real estate, renting real estate, investing in real estate, doing TV shows about real estate, doing vlogs about real estate, doing books about real estate, doing courses about real estate. If shit ever hits the fan, as it is right now, if a lot of those balls fall to the ground and I can't catch them, guess what? Not all of my eggs are in one basket. I've still got balls in the air. I still have other things happening. And now we're here at my house, townhouse, 8,000 square feet, because I wanna do as much as I possibly can. And I have my vision board and I know what I want and I want it in the future. And I want nice things and I want to be successful. And I wanted the biggest house in Brooklyn. One of the biggest single family townhouses in Brooklyn. And that's why there's a whale hanging right there because it is a whale of a house and I bought it. I never thought that was gonna be possible in my wildest dreams, even a couple years before I bought this, and that was two years ago, and I took a brand new house and I dropped a bomb on it and I ripped it all up, so let's go check it out. The master bedroom floor. Uh, the master bedroom floor is about the same size as my entire Soho apartment. No smoking. This whole house, everything that we're doing here is just another ball in the air. And speaking of balls in the air, this vlog, one, thank you guys for watching this. We're at 112 videos that we put out systematically every single week, which blows my mind. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Hit that little like button, the little make it turn blue. YouTube loves it when it turns blue. Every week I'm thinking, what are we gonna do for this vlog that people are gonna like? What's gonna be interesting? What can I talk about? That's why I love your comments and I love engaging with all of you. And that's it. That is the end of this vlog. 112 in the can. Ready, set, go!